John Dewey was one of America's greatest philosophers and one of the most renowned thinkers on educational reform in the late 18th and early 1900s. Through the schools he set up, known as the laboratories, Dewey studied the way in which children learn most effectively. He determined that only through hands-on activity do students truly learn. Born in 1859 in Burlington, Vermont, Dewey grew up in a rich cosmopolitan environment. He lived many years and over that time developed a unique outlook on education and life. This is a man who lived not only through the Civil War, but also through nuclear war. John Dewey was around for the beginning of compulsory education in the United States and hoped to see the end of the type of traditional learning that was happening at the turn of the century in his country. When John Dewey wrote his book, Experience in Education, in 1938, this was after a long career of studying the theory, looking into experiential learning and studying its effects on society. This book sums up Dewey's work from the beginning. It comes at a time when the two factions of traditional schools, which were set up for students to absorb knowledge in a structured manner against the new break towards progressive schools, which eliminated rules and walls. The traditional schools Dewey criticized were ineffective means of education, where students were expected to simply absorb information as sponges. Whereas on the other hand, free schools were set up where freedom was promoted simply for the sake of freedom. This brought a lot of discredit to the whole notion of progressive schools. In his book, Dewey tries to argue the way in which freedom can be brought to the classroom in a progressive way that allows students to learn more efficiently and does not stifle their learning. Dewey's plan fell right into the middle in between the traditional and progressive ways, where students are guided by the teacher, but through hands-on experience, not through mere passive absorption. For Dewey, all learning happened through experience. Experience was the key to transmission of knowledge, but not any experience accounted for an educational one. Experience had to be unique and individual, for example, an apple could fall on one's head right now, and he may just brush it off. But for Isaac Newton, it could lead to the theory of gravity. The experience is unique to each learner. A learner will take an experience in his own way. The second aspect of experience is that they must lead to growth. Through the experience that the student has, there must be some form of measurable outcome has changed from when the student has begun the activity and when he has finished it. While looking at growth, Dewey says that growth cannot just simply be growth for growth's sake. It must be a certain kind of positive growth. Dewey gives the example of a bank robber learning from robbing a bank. Yeah, he'll be a better bank robber, Dewey says, but not necessarily a better member of society. For Dewey, the growth that he speaks of is one in which the learner progresses towards being a better citizen. In the role of all this is the teacher. For Dewey, the teacher is there simply as a guide or a role. Dewey compares teachers to midwives. The midwife cannot necessarily give birth for the person, but is there to talk the person through giving birth themselves, just as the teacher is there to allow the learner to engage himself and achieve at the new knowledge through his own means. Teachers are guides, and teachers monitor the student's growth. Teachers are there to set up the activities which will be potentially beneficial to the students, and so they are not just merely a random assortment of activities and experiences, but rather ones that lead to growth, development, and becoming a better citizen. John Dewey's arguments with traditional education is that they try to allow learning to be done through mere cramming knowledge. Students are expected to read dozens and dozens of books in hopes that memorization of facts will somehow one day be beneficial. They are expected to one day be able to recall on these facts 
in a way that is completely outside of the manner in which they were learned, and use them in a beneficial way. Dewey thought this idea was completely ridiculous and had no connection to the students' lives, and therefore useless to their learning. For Dewey, in freedom, there was the notion that students should be allowed to feel free. But yet, what they learn has to be carefully monitored. Dewey saw that this was possible if one looked towards how games are played. There can be a certain set of rules, a certain set of guiding principles that do not feel like they are constricting you. Dewey gives the example of a baseball game where players can play the game as freely as they want and do not feel bound by the rules. If a player strikes out, he will not simply say, this is not fair, I shouldn't be allowed to strike out, this rule is not fair. He will merely say that he is bound by the rules and has to return to the bench because if he did not obey the rules, he would no longer be playing the game of baseball. When Dewey looks at this towards education, he sees that the teacher can set up rules that will not limit the students' freedoms in the way that traditional classrooms have done in the past. Students can be allowed to move around freely and engage in the learning in a way that he feels comfortable and happy, and at the same time realize that there are certain guidelines and rules that he must follow in order to learn, grow, and become an overall better citizen through engaging in the experiential learning activity. Dewey writes in Experience in Education, learning activities should be flexible enough to permit free play for individuality of experience, and yet firm enough to give direction towards continuous development. Dewey is saying that students shouldn't be sitting in desks while being yelled at by angry teachers. Instead, they should feel comfortable in their learning, and so they can develop in an appropriate way. For Dewey, all learning should be experiential. For example, if a student wants to learn about a specific animal, he should do it in the field with that animal. If a student wants to learn about a boat, they should be at the harbor learning about boats. There is no reason that any fact should be presented to the student outside of a context that, is, that the student is able to connect with his environment and with his life. Learning is not simply something that happens out of a book, from static information that has become knowledge. Learning is ever-changing and ongoing. If students are hoped to be able to adapt to the ever-changing future that cannot yet be predicted, they must be able to learn from their environments and not simply from random facts. In today's world where technology is changing the way of life so quickly, it is absolutely necessary that we engage in reforms. Dewey said, education should derive its materials from the present experiences and should enable the learner to cope with the problems of the present and the future.